first was Remy. I know Remy has a plan to come up, so that's good. Cool. All right, turn your Bibles to Hebrews 12, verse 1. I do have a plane to catch, actually. I have to leave in 10 minutes, so this will be fast, right? <clears throat> Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience to raise us up before us to pray. Heavenly Father God, I thank you for, for this wonderful day, for that you help me while I'm preaching, God, and you help me to preach with boldness, God, and you give me fluent words, God. And you give me a clear mind while I'm preaching God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, the title of my sermon is The Work of 10,000 Men. The Work of 10,000 Men. You'll find out why it's named it later. Uh, but there in Hebrews 12, 1, I'm just going to dig right into it. I don't have time to waste. But uh, Paul's talking about, he says, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. So people are usually familiar with sin. You know, it's the transgression of God's law. Or if you're homeschooled and you don't know big words, it's basically breaking God's law, okay, right? <laughs> I'm homeschooled, so I can make fun of this, right? Um, but then, so but what they don't catch usually sometimes when they, uh, when they read this is it says, let us lay aside every weight. Now, the weight that Paul's talking about is not necessarily sin. It's just the things that weigh you down in the Christian life, okay? So well, what's an example of the weights that we have in our Christian life? Well, TV's one of them. Big one, too, that people have. Video games, sports, and exercise. I mean... People uh, take exercise too far sometimes. Yeah. You know, be healthy, but yeah. come on now. You don't need a six-pack, whatever. Um, <laughs> worldly, worldly books. A lot of people get uh, wrapped up in reading. You need to be reading your Bible, you know. Amen. And then Facebook. Facebook's a big one of them. And, you know, it's amazing to me because on Facebook, people always point out what the old Baptist churches did, and they always point out what Christians are doing wrong. But hey, if you spent as much time as you were on Facebook out soul winning, you'd have your whole city one to Christ, yeah. okay? Yeah. But people don't care about that, and they just like to point the finger at people, okay? Yeah, and they don't right. just uh, just listen to what the Bible says, you know. They're so wrapped up in their own vanity, and they're so prideful, and they're so high that they don't even realize that they're letting their city go to hell because they could be going out so many during those times. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. And, you know, I use Facebook, you know, I try to, like, to find the soul winning events and stuff like that, but people take it too far sometimes. Yeah, they really right. do. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so I talked about the weights. Uh, some of them, but you know, then there's just the plain sin that it talks about in this verse, okay? It says, and the sin which does so easily beset us. Sin that easily besets you. A lot of you know, like fornication, those easily beset people, okay? Um, you know, stealing, lying, all these things. And the sin of pornography, too. You know, I am going to park on pornography because that one isn't touched on a lot for people because they think it's embarrassing and they think that it's yeah. it's not good to talk about, you know? Yeah. But people are, so, it's so, it, people are so nervous to preach about it that it just runs rampant. And that's Great terrible. Yeah. yeah. I'm here and my phone's pure tonight. I don't look at any of that kind of stuff, okay? And someone yeah. could check my phone I wouldn't care. But I bet you some of the men in this room, that's not the same. And I bet you when I say that, you have that feeling in your stomach because you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And you know what? If you're a parent and you give your kids a tablet and you give your kids a smartphone, yeah. you better be checking that. That's right. You cannot That's leave right. a kid to themselves because a son left to his own brain is mother's shame, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And no matter what, it, what that is, okay, if you have a tablet or if you've given your uh, kids free access to the internet, you yeah. better be checking that. And I wouldn't even give them that access in the Come first place. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay? Yeah. Because people, they take things too far and even though know, it's a good thing there's good technology on this but some people they just can't have them or some people you have to be really close to monitor and you know not just uh, bashing on the men because the men you know it's a bigger set of them but i was just looking at statistics st good night statistics <laughs> and it said that 25 to 50 percent of women look at that too on a weekly basis wow, so wow. I'm just talking to the men and i'm talking to women too okay are you guys just phones clean okay uh, you know, that's a big deal. And just because people don't see that sin, God sees that sin and he knows yeah, your heart. Right, right, and that right, sinking right. feeling that you have in your stomach right now, God knows it. Get right yeah. with God, okay? Purge yeah. that out of your life. Yeah. So that's the sin which is so easily beset us. And yeah. it's, uh, so that's one of the things you have to do to do the work of 10,000 men. You know, another thing that we have to cut off is backbiting and railing and tail bearing. This is really rampant in our movement because it's seen as a little sin, but really it has a big, uh, no, it has a big uh, a wave that happens with it. Mm -hmm. uh, in Proverbs, I don't have the verse right now, or yeah, I do it. Proverbs 26, verse 20, it says, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. Yeah. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife seeth this. Are you tr yeah. causing strife tonight in the church? 
because you just won't keep your mouth shut about an issue. Hey, if it doesn't have to do with you and it doesn't direct the, uh, directly affect the person you're talking with and it's not true, keep your mouth shut about it. Amen. You don't need to be telling people other people's business, okay? And you know, in Matthew, uh, that brings me to another point. Matthew 18, verse 15, it says, Moreover, thy brother shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him, uh, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone right alone that's if right hear thee thou hast gained thy brother if you go and you talk to your brother and sister in christ in private about an issue don't go tell other people about that it says alone right. or you can think that you're righteous because you went and did it the matthew 18 way but if you go tell everybody you didn't do it the matthew 18 way right so keep it to yourself if you have a problem with someone and that's how things get fixed but when you have a problem with someone and you don't just let it and you don't just keep it between you and them well then i tell peter about it and then peter you know he goes and tells someone else because he doesn't know that we solve the problem and it just spreads that way. Gossip's like fire. That's what it says in that verse. It said that it's uh, the gossip, you know, that a tail bearing is like a fire, okay? Um, so if it's not your business and it does not true and it doesn't apply to a person directly, you don't need to tell them about it, okay? Amen, Amen brother. And then it says in Proverbs, I don't have the verse right now, it says, The north wind drives away rain, sewed up an angry countenance. Uh, backbiting tongue. If someone's backbiting, you get angry with them. That's what the Bible says. It says it drives it away like the north wind, okay? Because if every time someone came and was tell, uh, telling me backbiting things, or they were backbiting my brother, if I got mad at them, you know what? That would stop right yeah. then. But people don't get mad, and they're scared to confront people. Hey, that's something you confront someone about. Amen. You're backbiting on your brother and sister in Christ, you confront them right there, and you say, hey, don't talk about my brother and sister in Christ, okay? Amen. That's Those are the things that you do need to be confrontational about. You don't let back, backbiting continue. So, you know, those are a couple of things that you can do to serve God more. And this is the reason the sermon's titled this. It's in Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Go there real quick. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. It says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. This is so true today with the Baptist churches. And Baptist churches will not stand in the gap today. But you know, that leads, that's what I was talking about earlier about the pointing of the fingers. Well, you can just sit there and say, oh, well, the Baptist church is up in uh, the Philippines or the Baptist church is over in New York or the Baptist church is over in Kentucky. They don't have the pastors. They don't have the soul owners. That's what, their fault. Hey, but you know what? I don't take that as their fault. I want to win the whole world to Christ, not just my area. And you know what? If you're only going soul winning once a week, if you're only going soul winning twice a week, you're not going to win the whole world to Christ. And people are literally dying and going to hell. Yeah. And while you sit there on your Facebook and point out people, and while you sit there watching TV, people are dying and going to hell. Yeah. What's the matter with you guys? Yeah. What's the matter with us? With humans? Preaching. It's ridiculous. You know, in one chapter a day, reading your Bible one chapter a day, that's not going to cut it. No. That's right. oh. Going so many once a week ain't going to cut it. Going so many twice a week for an hour, that's not going to cut it. You need to get together as a group and go out with your brothers and sisters in Christ and make extra time. Pastor Menace can't just make all the times for soul winning. Sometimes you got to go do it with a group of people. You don't let them know, like he said. But go soul winning more than just once or twice a week. Good. Go more. I don't want to let this whole world go to hell. I don't want to get up to heaven and say, well, you know, there was those other Baptists that didn't do their job. No. You know, I want to do their job for them. Amen. I want to work some overtime. Amen. This is a war that we're fighting. Amen. 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 It's a war we're fighting. Yeah. And you know Amen. What? We're outnumbered just like the theme has been, and even just like the theme of this morning. We're outnumbered. And you know what? When you're outnumbered, you got to do the work of 10,000 men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every soldier needs to be fit for the fight. Every soldier needs to be on top of their game. They don't need to be uh, reading one chapter a day. They don't need to be praying for 10 minutes a day. You need to step it up. Yeah, step it up because the world's going to hell. Step it up because Jesus died on the cross for your sin. Yeah. How, long, how often do we let that go by the wayside? Yeah. Go to Titus. Uh, two. Titus 2, 14, it says, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, purify uh, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, 
Zealous of good works. Yeah. Not just doing the good works, but being zealous while you do them. Yeah. Yeah. Stepping it up a notch. Doing more than what's expected of you. Doing the work of 10,000 men. Doing what the other people aren't doing right now. Right. Stepping it up because just because there's a job, you know, just because you don't have enough people for the job, if the boss expects the job to be done, he expects you to do more. That's right. That's right. And you know what? You can just point the finger at other Baptists, but I'm not going to let that happen. You know, I want to win the whole world. I want to flip the world upside down. And it's not going to happen by you doing bare minimum. Let's pray. Dear hey. Father God, uh, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for this sermon I was able to preach. Uh, thank you for giving me a uh, fluent speech, God. Uh, I pray that you'd help the other preachers as they come up, and you'd uh, bless the conference. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen brother. Make it clear because Remy does have a plane to catch. He did not bribe me to take to fill the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so, I do take bribes, but he <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>